Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Geomologist Presents Take Two. BG and I were discussing uh, the long history based on, I guess, uh, if I were to redo number 13 in RPG a day, Evocative Environments, I'd just been watching The Last Kingdom. So I'd love to run a game in that time period, um, 8th to 10th century or so, uh, England, when there were three kingdoms, Wessex, Northumbria, and, and Mercia. But uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today, because that's probably another podcast, and maybe I'll get BJ on, and maybe an Anglo-Saxon expert. But today, we're going to do an unboxing. This is our ongoing series of what's in the box. What's in the box? And you can see it is not head-sized, BJ, right? Right, right. So there's no... Amy is safe. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she's... Uh, there could be a, a hand in here, though, and some phalange, but there is not. So this box comes from Flying Cloud Fulfillment, and it is M-A-C-U-A-H-U-I-T-L. How do you pronounce that, BJ? Maquitel. Maquitel. So this is a game uh, we have the PDF of. We've had them for a while. It is by the Basic Expert, and he has put out a game Um using the white box engine, a role-playing game set in, um, at, in the Aztec Empire. So I will open this up. Cut away from yourself, see? Cut away. You need, you need an obsidian blade. Yeah, I, oddly enough, I do not have an obsidian blade, I think, but I'm, I think I have like a obsidian arrowhead. Like when we were growing up, uh, my dad would and I would go out and visit our family in New Mexico, and there are these arrowhead beds, like just walking around the arrowhead beds. I mean, I guess it's the old um, territory of the of the Pueblo mm -hmm. uh, nation from time before, right? For a long the time. Anasazi. Anasazi too, and and they're just you walk around on the road and on the trail, boom. Yeah. So you got all sorts of stuff. That's crazy. So I, I do have one somewhere. Um, that would have been, I should have done that. I should have done that. Oh, well. Uh, so anyway, we'll take it out. And interestingly, it is an obsidian black cover here. Upside down. With blood red. Blood red Aztec calendar. Yeah. And BJ has set this up for us. So we will be able to flip through this and talk about it. On the back mm -hmm. is some sort of owl-headed deity. I think that's an Albert. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe an Aztec Albert. And here this up. Uh, huh? Sounds about right. Go ahead. Uh, so it's about 180 pages, though the last uh, two or three pages are the backers, uh, quite a few mm -hmm. backers. Uh, 177 pages, 176 and 77 are um, indexed. So that's. Oh, I didn't even look to see if our names are in there. Oh, yeah. I'm sure our names are in there. Um. If you guys um, want to go look back through the back catalog of Nerds RPG Variety Cast, right. Chase interviews has an episode where he interviews the author. I think it was he did it a little bit before the Kickstarter launched, right. and right. he so, talks about his own. Some some of his ancestors are uh, Mashika, which Mashika, is yeah. is is the uh, the uh, they're they're it, the Aztecs. That's the the name the Aztecs would refer to themselves by. Yeah. Um, Although so nowadays, he, I think it's both you could say both um yeah yeah i mean my my origins being from in northern and central mexico and central america i definitely have um ancestry like that in my background which is great yeah so uh, so yeah so this is a uh, by the basic work words art and layout by the basic expert maquitel white box role playing in the aztec empire so we'll switch views here okay and we'll take a look through it I'm gonna turn my camera off. All right. All right. The switch off. Switched off my uh, my desktop camera and I'm moving over to a different different desk where I have a. I'm, I'm learning how to film things for maybe for YouTube, maybe for I don't know what. But here we've got a. I got a camera set up, so I apologize yeah. for the glare. I can't do anything about the overhead light. I need to get a a lamp or something to record. So although if, if it was anything but this glossy metallic embossed front it probably wouldn't be a problem 
Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of glare, I think, in the pages when we were t testing it out, but it, it seems pretty fine. So, yeah, we get open to the table of contents. Okay. Yeah. You can see it's it's a nice hardbound book, and it's got mm -hmm. this red uh, ribbon bookmark. Yeah, it's really which nice. I always appreciate. So. All right. So here's the table of contents on that centered. Yeah, so it has like uh, ten chapters and the and appendices, um, which includes the index, and um, appendix D is a map of uh, Tenochtitlan, a glossary, a resources, and then the sacred calendar, which is kind of important in gameplay, yep. which I thought was a kind of a neat addition. Yeah. And so as think... we flip, th as we flip through here, this artwork is amazing. It's, I love it's mostly it. I love just, the line it's mostly drawings just and... you know line drawings, but it's just so evocative of uh of the, the, the setting here. Yeah, and Basic Expert does all the uh the art too, it looks it seems mm -hmm. like. Yeah, so uh so the introduction, I what I love there's a cool introduction um on the first page. I love the second yeah. part of it. Uh um yeah, and I guess maybe there's a good point to talk about like I guess have there been game set in the setting in the past i mean i think i know i, don't, D &D, I, don't, I mean I not, think you've got not his, in the historical past no i mean you've got mastica which is part of the forgotten yeah. realms but it, that is more about almost more about the uh the the uh people from om who are sort of the sort of the somewhat analogous to spain in the Forgotten Realms, it's more about their discovery and, and colonization of Mastic. Yeah, it's, it's not more really... like Conquista. Yeah, it's more about yeah. it's like the Conquista, akin to the Conquista. Yeah. The same with Seven C, I believe. I feel like Seven C, right, has like the um these orthologs, I guess, for lack of a better term, because mm -hmm. they're not called, you know, Mexico or or Yucatan yeah. or whatever, but they have these orthologs for those indigenous peoples, uh, similar indigenous peoples on our planet, um, seven or, or the the lizard men and <laughs> the lizard men yeah. and the old world of Warhammer, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of yeah they they have like this the their architecture is uh, harkens to right the, uh, mm -hmm. the sort of step pyramids and things that you would see in the yeah. Mesoamerican, um, but and then I mean uh, one of these days one hopes that Coyote and Crow We'll have a pre-colonization world book for that area too, which would be kind of neat. Yeah, they just did one yeah. for like a northwest, the northwest, um, right, the northwest territory of that of their world, their pre-colonization world, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this is I, I have uncolonized. not, huh? Yeah, un yeah, they're, they're, they're pre unco uncolonized. Uncolonized. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uncolonized. A few, it's a alternate history where there's no colonization, but we're right. in sort of the modern or, or near future of now. Yeah, right. Right. So this is really like inspired by the three little black books, uh, mm -hmm. or three little brown bl books. Black books would, are the Trowler books. The three little brown books. Um, and he also contemplated using his own system from Atomic Punk twenty one sixty, as well as a Cepheus engine. Cepheus engine could be interesting too. Um, yeah, that's something to talk about. I've always wanted to. Ha and I think Cepheus engine would be kind of neat for like a campaign, uh, where. Uh, you st sort of started maybe as Northmen, or maybe in a in a sort of a, a Mesoamerican situation, and then the spacemen come and take you up uh, to space, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, in your next career. But uh, anyway, so um, I think what's cool is they do have how to pronounce words in the waddle, um, which is the second. So that's great. So you can practice your the waddle pronunciations as you look mm -hmm. through the names of the of maybe your your own character's name or the names of the the deities in this world, but uh, TL is a tlot, tlot sound, tlot, a tlot like tlalock. X is unique uh, Aztec sounding, and it's like sh like Mexica, like uh, BJ was pronouncing. Um, although some people use a, use an H at that, depending on where you're from, and say like Mexica, um, like Mexico. Which is the origins of the, the word Mexico, of course. Right, right. C is a K, but it's like in the back of the throat. And then TZ like pretzel like so, so, sounds so uh, so it's pretty good actually it comes naturally to me so uh, yeah. it's kind of neat so the diphthongs are very interesting I love pronunciations and then we get into straight into it getting started um, yeah. do your attributes uh, 
Yeah, this is pretty typical D and D: strength, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, dexterity, and charisma. Well, charisma is a little um, different. Well, I mean, you roll it the same, but it's, see... it means something different, right? So, it's just neat. Yeah. yeah so, ch charisma gives you your your as with all D and D, your sort of number of followers and their loyalty base, but it also defines your social class within uh, Aztec society. Right. Right. And I love. I actually really enjoyed his little treatise and uh, explanation for the alignment, the alignment, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, old D and D. Yeah. Is, um, law, uh, law, new lawful, neutral, or chaotic. And yep. he kind of gives an idea of what that would mean in this society, which is yeah. like lawful. Do you align with yourself with the status quo, quo oppose it or remain indifferent? So law law, you would, respect the order neutral mm -hmm. eh, you, you could you know whatever just you know don't don't uh look at a noble the wrong way or you may end up at the top of the temple and then the last one is you're chaotic and you propose the order so i think that was kind of neat uh way that what did you what do you think bj I, I think it's interesting that they talk about it in terms of cosmic you know the, sort of the cosmology of, of aztec beliefs mm -hmm. that uh, that they believe their society is responsible for preventing the end of the world by maintaining sort of the sense of cosmic order. Um, and so, you know, everything they do, um, e even the, the, sac the ritual sacrifices are not necessarily a malicious or, uh, you know, purely, you know, just brute acts of brutality for the sake of brutality. They, they believe it's something the gods demand to prevent the world from ending. And so right. the idea is that they are in the, the, the fourth sun or the fourth age. There were three worlds pre, prior to this one that, that ended in chaos because of various things. And so uh, upholding their structures, particularly their religious observances and their way of life is helps to keep the universe stable so that it doesn't end. Yeah, and I wonder if that aligns with sort of this, there being the, them being the fourth age, if that aligns with sort of the mythical mytho history of the region right that there have been previous there definitely were previous empires right they mm -hmm. you just go north of Tenochtitlan and you find Teotihuacan which was a previous a collapsed yeah. uh, uh empire the Mayans had collapsed already Olmecs and Toltecs and all those so I think mm -hmm. it was it's probably this like uh, mytho history that the Aztec peoples when they migrated from the north a kind of embraced and fell into and then conquered and then therefore became the stewards which i think yeah. is pretty neat yeah and they're cut the, the cool thing is the cosmology that he talks about with alignment kind of goes into um the next phase and i don't know if you want to talk about the zodiac and all that and how that and really how it's used they don't just spend you know these several pages looking at it it, it becomes kind of a mechanic which is kind of cool yeah, you're 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 born under a certain zodiac sign and on a certain day, and there are certain numbers that are considered fortunate and unfortunate, lucky or unlucky. Um, and you randomly determine the the day of your birth within the zodiac and the the cycle of the calendar. Um, and and it notes an actual practice from 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 the Aztecs that it's really more about the day your parents give you your name, and so that that if you were born on an unlucky day, your parents could wait up to four days to give you your name to try to change, change your fate. Right. To, right. to get, get a little better prospects. So, I mean, it, you know, I guess at cert a certain point you're just screwed depending on when it is, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit of chance there. So, so in your character creation, you determine that and that gives, that potentially gives you um, some effects. Like here, here's the, the effects of, of where you are in the calendar uh, based on, on the, 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 the day you're born. Right, right. Um, Which is kind of cool, and it's associated yeah. with a certain god, and gives you certain certain um, effects. Uh, yeah, we, we don't have to go neat. through all these. No, but no. For, for... The, we really neat little hieroglyphs for each of those. Um, yeah, pictographs for them. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's called the the uh, uh, Tarkena, right? Yeah, Tarkena, right. So, using that hard K sound, but it, it is yeah. pretty neat. They they refer to uh, animals and and uh, mm -hmm. items. Um, which is kind yeah. of cool. Let's see, there's quite a quite a few here. Yeah, yeah. And then and then the days also. So the unlucky day, if you're born or you, you know, 
if you're born on a lucky day or an unlucky day, you roll 2d6 and it'll give you your boon or your bane based on that. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I like I like that kind of stuff. It's not like a full on, you know, uh, life path, but it does give you like a a touchstone to you know to kind of throw into the the mythology of your character, right? Like like what what sign are they born under? Do you know? I mean, I know that Harn Master uses like sun signs to kind of dictate that, and they actually play into your like skills and your some of your abilities. But do you know of any other games that would do that, BJ? Um, doesn't Warhammer Fantasy? Isn't there something about your your birth that affects you? I think for humans, it's like maybe it determines your doom. But I don't. Yeah, I don't remember if it gives you. I don't remember the fourth edition if it gives you at least if it gives you an effect. But um, I definitely know like Horn Master does that when you because it's kind of cool. Yeah. So, all right. So, when we get to uh, uh, page fourteen, is interesting. So, um, status points and advancement—that's something that they do a little different. Yeah. So you don't. There's no. There's no money. You know, in in traditional D and D, your your XP primarily is derived from treasure. Uh, so you don't get XP here. You get SP status points. So the, the rewards you would get for defeating enemies or accomplishing uh, different objectives would translate into status points. And you can you can bank those to level up or you can use them as sort of a currency to acquire um, various things, land, uh, equipment, followers, things like that. So that is that is a sort of a deviation from traditional D&D is that your experience points are. You, you can you can expend experience points to get things, but then you're kind of that that takes you farther behind on getting closer to the next level. Yeah, it's interesting. So I maybe that, that that could also though explain why. So like if you're a pure adventurer, and you're going to advance to become you know um, a, a powerful, notable warrior, but you don't have a lot of stuff necessarily uh, compared yeah. to maybe a noble, right? Who has the that's why they have a lot of stuff, but they're not necessarily super martial yeah, they, they, they've spent their time on on acquiring they spent their status other on things acquiring things, instead of right? yeah which then yeah. like that that's, that's kind of cool that's a cool, cool way actually it's a very interesting and cool way to mitigate this idea of like well how come like i noticed that in basic um in bx especially like all these uh and in in a d and d like the forgotten realms like uh the bartender is like a 20th level fighter yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, type of thing. But, you know, so, um, so yeah, it, it's pretty. It's interesting how they do that. I think like um, um, that the what's that other one called? Adventures uh, Dark and Deep, mm -hmm. the other AD and D uh, that is uh, that the author suggests is kind of what uh, Gygax had would int had intended for like a one point five instead of tack ons yeah. from Unearth Arcana. They do have mm -hmm. a way where you do spend XP. Um, right to to acquire knowledge and skills and stuff yeah. that i mean it does take away from progression so it's like a it's like a give and take it's very interesting i know there's some games like cypher system that does that too and and some players like that and some players don't so i guess that's really yeah. how you want to play the game what your goals and adventuring things are you know and and uh but i guess we will get to that kind of idea and your, how you so your stats a... points are are it's your uh your X, xp and your currency Right. Yeah. Yes. So that's pretty interesting. All right, so there's a nice little simple character sheet that's in there. And then we get to the character classes as well. Yeah. yeah. And this is not too, doesn't deviate too far. So you've got the first one is the Eagle Warrior, which corresponds to um, the Thief class for, for White Box. It corresponds to um, what? It, it really corresponds to the thief. It uses the thief's experience points, progression, and, and hit oh, dice and everything. Does? But it's like a warrior, right? Yeah. Oh, but it's more yeah, like it's a, really kind of it's more like a ranger. Yeah, I know. I just seen that. Yeah, it's trained in stealth. So, so is there a skill? I guess there's a skill system sort of in this game. It's just the D six that you find in in basic D and D. Uh, what one things that White Box has done? Uh, they replace the thief skills. They eliminated the percentile, and you just roll the the d six that you do for anybody else that 
you know, is looking for something hidden or trying to. Oh, you know, right, right. Yeah, like when you're looking for task. secret door, like when you're looking uh, for secret you know, doors. Oh, that's cool. So it's kind of in a, in a way, I guess, like Hyperborea expanded. Yeah. So, that. so like a, a, yeah. So like a regular character gets a one and six to find the, the notice a secret door. Well, a, a thief gets a two and six and it goes up as they level. And so this is the translated oh, wow. one into the that's evil cool. warrior here. To where they're, and it was also include wilderness skills in yeah, addition stealth, to the survival, skill. tracking, and climbing, moose only trap detection. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. So uh, I could see where you could pretty much port this into white box and just say, "Here's a ranger." You know, <laughs> uh, just using that mechanic, but uh, but that's that's really cool. Yeah. So the Eagle Warriors' primary uh, goal is is to be a scout and to to capture right. enemies. Right. Right. And I guess they do have something on female characters. Yeah, they, they do note that traditionally women would not have played been warriors. Uh, that it's up to the group to decide whether they want to hold with that convention. But they they write he, he writes the book as though that's the case, mm -hmm. just to be consistent with, with with what we know about Aztec culture. But that you know you're free in your game to 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 suspend that distinction if you want. Yep. Okay. So then they have um, Jaguar Warrior. And that's yeah, and like this is more of a fight, straight up fighter, right? Yeah, although you've got a little bit of a almost like a barbarian or berserker range. I mean, the, the Jaguar Fury is just the fighter's multi attack against low hit dice creatures. Uh -huh. um, but you also have a uh, if he's at half hit points, his AC improves by two and he gets a plus one attack and damage bonus. So that, that to almost me is like almost a, like a proto friends, yeah. berserker rage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, but otherwise, this is, this is pretty much a, the standard original D and D fighter. Cool. And then interesting, protect uh, Pochteca is next. So a yeah, a merchant. Um, and they're using the. This is interesting. They're using the cleric XP pr progression. Neat. Um, but they're more of a diplomat and negotiator. They don't actually have spells or any kind of magical abilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. So I guess kind of like a face character, really, not really. Yeah, a... that's really really what they are, is kind of a face character. Yeah. It says uh, they're used as spies. Notice, notice when they're in diplomacy negotiation, they, they get an advantage on their reaction rolls. They roll 3d6 and take the two best. Oh, nice. Dice, cool. which I thought, again, again, this is just, this is not only really cool, but I see ways you can crib mechanics into even other genres to kind of create different styles of, yeah. uh, of characters you don't normally get with just your fighter, fighter cleric, and magic user. Yep. Um, and they've got some 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 uh, bonuses to when they try to travel. And again, that's based on that two d six. Yeah. That one d six roll. And then you have the Nawali. Or is that how you say it? Nawali. Nawali. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the priest. It's yeah. interesting though. The uh, so you you intelligence is the the core ability for the merchant, and and the the priest is using again the, the magic users uh progression, progression yeah. in, in terms of xp hit dice saving throws attack bonus and, and the spells but wisdom is their ability because they're they're considered a priest they're still praying to the gods for their for their magic mm -hmm. um and so uh and then he notes and i think he notes later on in the, the chapter on magic there in, there would be no distinction between say the the, the divine spiritual and the occult um yeah, supernatural so that it's just magic is magic magic is magic. and it, and it yeah, comes from the neat. gods um yeah. but uh so that's pretty cool and then we have a, a tommy mercenary this these would be people who are the based on the atomi they're not uh they're not aztec but they are right. a mercenary like conscripts mm -hmm. yeah that they use as auxiliary warriors and th this is probably more just a straight up i think fighter type mm -hmm. like, again uh, probably in whereas the the jaguar warrior gets that sort of uh you know they both get a battle berserker fear. rage yeah they, they gets a battle for your but then he gets a melee master they can pick a weapon to have a plus one attack bonus so yeah so kind of like a that. skirmisher i seen like skirmisher yeah so they don't get that rage once once they start to lose hit points but they do get this this um, thing yeah. and an ambusher they're 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 got an ambusher ability and then finally and then the shorn one it's like um, a paladin right these are like paladins yeah uh, and once they get to it, it's level seven, they start to cast spells as a Nahuali of first first level and just and progress up there. So this is this is 
yeah, definitely a a kind of yeah. a, a paladin like character. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Evocative character classes, I like that. Um, then they have um, yeah. money and equipment. Pretty yeah. standard. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very it's small D6, list, right? It's a, it's, oh, it's a yeah, it's a D six damage, and there's D6 just a plus damage. one or D6 minus everything. one. For, yeah, plus one or minus one to some of them to reflect bigger and larger weapons. Right, right. And then the armor. But you look, look at this art. Here's got to give you this nice picture of the club. And here's a mock weedle. Yeah. You know, the name is is the game is named for this. I think iconic probably everybody's sword, seen yeah. this iconic weapon, Mesoamerican weapon. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw. Uh, I can't remember if it was Mythbusters or another episode where they were trying to talk about sort of they were exploring some of the conflict between the conquistadors and the uh, and uh, you know Mesoamerican tribes and they they had a replica mock weedle and they they put a Spanish uh, breastplate like the conquistador would have had on a dummy and this thing just chewed through it really wow. it just just one just reared back and and just hacked at it and it just caved it in and just it pierced the the steel it was did pretty, it pretty amazing the, did it destroy the 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 blade uh, i don't remember probably i think it probably did but um, but i guess that's the thing he, like, he got, they got they got several good swings and it it, it just pulverized the and, and you could tell by the way it damaged the dummy that yeah the person who got hit would have probably broken a collarbone and had internal bleeding and right right <laughs> Mm -hmm. it, it was it was a very very effective weapon yeah so i didn't see it i didn't notice do they have like do they tell you what you start with um let's see i i kind of skipped that yeah I don't, i'm just um, trying to look what like your starting kit might be your, they have like all the costs in sp but like what do you start yeah. with Where players you start, start with? with 3d6 times 10 status points so just like you'd have 3d6 times 10 gold Okay. And D and D, there it is, right here. Cool. Um, the other thing mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight, which is really interesting, is they have the Adelaide in here as one of the ranged weapons. And an Adelaide, mm -hmm. we'd have to, you can find pictures of them or and, and YouTube videos demonstrating them. Yeah. Is they, uh, they, it, it's this little thing that helps you like fling a javelin. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use a javelin and an, an Adelaide, and it uses sort of this this sort of, and to um, to throw it farther and, and harder. Yeah. Um. What's interesting is is um, and this has always been interested to me since, since I'm Cherokee. Uh, Cherokees are the only North American tribe to use atlatls and blowguns. It's interesting. So you feel like maybe and, they and, traded and, with and, the... and, and, and our basket making and pottery style has elements of uh, Mesoamerican influence. So you think they they traded? I'm not sure where that comes from. You know, there, there, there are a couple different Cherokee origin stories, but one of them does talk about coming across a great water, which would seem to indicate the Gulf of Mexico. So oh, cool. uh, we also have uh, Central American mitochondrial DNA. Oh, cool. So there, there is one suggestion that perhaps the, 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 at one point there was a chair include some Iroquoian because our language is Iroquoian. Our religion is Muskogean, but then we have this 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 Mesoamerican mitochondrial DNA. So, oh, interesting. Th it may be that you know Cher Cherokees, as we understand them, have have three or more distinct. Um, yeah, well, like we we mentioned earlier, you know, there are several ans collapses. groups of ancestors. Yeah, there are several yeah. collapses in that in that air in that region of yeah. um, multiple empires uh, yeah. before the rise of the Aztec. So, so yeah, I mean that's kind of cool. Yeah. I, and then the, the, so, always so, a big chapter on spells, right? Or armor. What do yeah. you say? Armor. Well, I would say the armor. You've got some cloth, laminate armor. You've got a war suit, um, which is a little more heavier armor, which only only you have to be of a, of a warrior cla class. That's yeah. to to use. Not as implying not only just because of training, but also because you would be the only ones allowed to wear that kind of armor. Um, and, and it notes that the eagle and jaguar warriors will have the right to decorate their their armor with with feathers and and pelts. Oh yeah, that's neat. So um, so anyway, so your armor shields. class is generally kind of low comparatively, right? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, cloth laminate is plus two, so probably the equivalent of leather in, yep. in D and D. And then the jaguar 
War suit uh, is a plus three, the, like studded leather. Yeah, the Eagle War suit is only plus two. The Jaguar War suit is plus three. Mm -hmm. They can do kind of offset it, that you can have a larger shield that gives you a plus two, which in the yeah, big, big shield, shield just gives you a light, plus one. Like the light shield that it looks yeah. like in the picture the Otomi mercenaries had, and then uh, the big shield that you see yep. in, in pictures and yep. in part. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think the other thing that maybe offsets that that is that there's a major emphasis, at least when you're Humans are fighting one another not to kill each other. Yes. That um that because the the captives are needed for for, for rituals. Um you mm -hmm. actually get five times this the S P if you take an, a human enemy alive as opposed to killing them. Oh interesting. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's cool. So yeah, you don't have great armor, but no, but most most of you the humans you fight aren't trying to kill you. They're they're trying to knock Capture you out, you, take you, knock you out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. there's some basic equipment in here, uh, and then there's, there's a note on followers and how much SP you have to spend, um, for, for a follower. Okay. That's Players cool. can allocate status, status points to acquire followers, reflecting their heroic stature and leadership. The followers, um, can be hired by the players by using status points. Hmm. The number of followers and the morale is based on charisma. Um, and so there's some stuff on loyalty. Yeah, I like how they, it kind of blends all that into the uh, societal and experience. And it's kind of neat. All right. So spells. Yeah, see. The, 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 the uh, game yeah, only goes so... up to level 10, uh, right? So mm -hmm. I'll, yep. I'll, I'll play beyond that. But um, yeah, so, so here's here's the, kind of the cool thing with with memorizing spells is um so the the, the spell caster prays to the gods for their spells. Yes. Um and then they have to roll a reaction check using their charisma for each spell. Um nine to twelve you get the spell. Six to eight, it's uncertain. You have to roll again and spend another hour prayer. Three to five, the gods deny that spell. If you roll two or less, but if you have a penalty, it's denied, and you can't petition again for one to six days. So, um, yeah. there's some this arcing back to some other games. I'm, I'm thinking DC, uh, where you know <laughs> magic is not reliable. Is, right, is, right. Is, is, um, uh, reliable. The latest, um, what's it called? Shadow Dark. Shadow Dark. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. Um. And I think also you have to make a, ro a reaction roll when you cast the spell, and that doesn't. There's no untoward results of the reaction roll once you have the spell and cast it. But it does note that if you get an eleven or twelve, the gods are particularly favor feel you favor, and you don't expend the spell slot. Yeah, that's pretty. You cool. could you could beat hide some spells based on bad reaction roll, but then later when you're casting the spells you do have, a good reaction means you don't lose the spell slot. So it kind of kind of evens out, I think, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting how they do. You can that. see on the spell list here; you, you, these are these are unique spells. Yeah, yeah, Go they're ahead. all oh, unique sorry. spells. Yeah. They're all unique spells. No, I, I kind of like. Again, it's uh, this is sort of the the um, simpleness of the base system allows you to kind of play around with how the spell casting works. And I, I know in the, in the future when I go over the the kind of two um, sort of Anglo-Saxon period games that I'm interested in. I've been watching Last Kingdom. Um, then one of them does have like a kind of a very unique. Look, look at this, uh, this artwork. Spell list. Yeah, yeah, that's please. pretty cool. Pretty unique spell spell lists and unique ways of casting spells and just sort of your traditional Vancy. And I kind of like that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, like Stella or, or yeah. Icon that, that they're showing there. Um, so that's cool. So very, very uh, evocative names, evocative yeah. spells. Right? And then they talk about adventuring. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, so you've got uh, two, rules on okay. gaining status. Yes. Um, right, they give you status point reward this, chart. Yeah. Um, so there's the base SP for killing and defeating an enemy, but if the enemy is human and you capture it alive, um, five times the base SP. And I, I remember the funny thing when the interview Jason did with this guy, he was talking about, you know, you're your XP, your your kind of the thing that the, the currency that drives the game forward, 
um, is based on these human captives. And so you suddenly, you know, it's, it's not like regular D&D where, okay, we, we're out of the dungeon. We have our loot. It's a two day tr- journey back home. You don't expect your, you know, your chest of gold to just get up and run off in the middle of the night. <laughs> right. Right. Oh yeah, that leads to that. Another, you're like, oh totally no, there goes our other adventures. There, there goes our, there goes our experience. Go get him. Well, it's kind of uh, neat. I like this, this reward table. is pretty cool in that, um, mm-hmm. right? It, it's it reminds me also not just of, uh, you know, just your standard XP for defeating enemies, whatever, but also yeah. like like uh, milestones uh, during an adventure or milestones during a career, even. Yeah. Which, which harkens to uh, Pendragon. Where you accumulate glory, um, yeah. You don't have to spend glory to get get stuff, but um, but just kind of like rescuing captive enemies, conceiving a child, yeah. um, stuff yeah. like that, right? So defending a city from attack, escaping the capture from enemies. You yeah. can get yourself captured on purpose and then escape with some good FP. Man. Yep, it's perfect. Yeah. So they get some stuff on time and movement, which is kind of typical D and D stuff. Light. They do know that. Um, when you you're in a fight, you have to roll to see if your weapons break, and then, but you can repair them afterwards. Mm-hmm. So as long as you have the proper supplies, which is going to be like wood, obsidian, sinew, things like that. So you might want to think about as 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 an, during your adventuring c- career, part of what you should get yourself out with are some some basic stuff to repair your weapons with. Yeah, a note about weapons. Yeah, so uh, so they're unique craft with some wood and obsidian. Just as back, mm-hmm. it, and then uh, I think what happens is you, um, yep. Yeah. If an attack roll fails, you roll a, a d6 to see if it breaks. Yep. And you can see them like one d6 pieces of obsidian in combat. So, uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. So yeah, um, and then you can you sit there repair weapons. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Here's some some stuff on what it costs to to build structures. Yeah, so there's your your domain play, mm-hmm. uh, healing, uh, oh, random encounters, yeah, exploration, um, feats of strength. Um, yeah, also using the d6 mechanic. Yeah, these are these these are all clack very very tip just standard D and D kind of rules. Mm-hmm. So there's exploration rules. Here's random encounters for the different air, encou- places you would find. Oh, I like uh, this discovery. Discovered you locations. Like a, you so could you do can, a sandbox hex yeah. call. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I noticed that in like uh, one of the games, but you could yep. actually probably get it to get a map of of the area, um, use Google, and then o- overlay it. Mm-hmm. You know, take all the political stuff out, current political stuff, but the or you could do this. You could do this. Oh, there it you go. Has, there. It has a map of the, of of Mexico, <laughs> the geography of Mexico, right here. Yeah, there you go. I didn't know. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, and then you have your next crawl, and here's some stuff on how to use the dungeon or the, the wilderness. Yeah, mm-hmm. wilderness events, uh, underworld yeah. adventuring. If you go down into caves um, or, or yeah. ancient and they temples, have discoveries and everything. That's great. Okay. If I play this, I want to get one of those um, death whistles. Oh yeah, I have one. <laughs> I have one actually. Yeah. A jaguar death uh, whistle. They're yeah. crazy, here's, dude. They're crazy. Yeah. Here's some. Uh, Ways to generate NPCs and name generation, uh, and the importance yeah. of name generation, because you know the players go, "Oh, what's what's the what is the uh, the merchant's name?" Oh, Bob. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so they give you combat uh, com- combat encounter reaction rolls, um, declare actions, how initiative works, side based initiatives. Yep, side based um, initiative. And these are these are all kind of original D and D based. Uh, you have an option to parry though. That's cool. Um, oh, how does the parry work? A character may choose to forego an attack okay. and instead parry a foe. Doing so incurs a negative four penalty on the attacker. If the attacker would miss because of the parry, the weapon is knocked out of his hand. Mm-hmm. If the defender's weapon is heavier and bigger, then okay. Oh, so if you parry with a bigger, bigger, heavier weapon, you you disarm the opponent. Yeah. Um, if the attacker would miss regardless of the parry, the defender may perform a counter attack. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's good to know. But then you yeah. have to forego your attacks. And yeah, on your turn, the, yeah. And then hope for the counter attack. Yeah. yeah. So here's some attack. He's, he's got rules for ascending armor class yep. and attack bonus or <laughs> descending armor class and Thacko, depend, right. just depending on how you prefer to play. Mathematically, right. it's the same. Yes. Uh, 
You can do damage. the weapon versus armor as well. They have a weapon versus AC there. Oh, they do. Very yeah. cool. Optional rule, weapon versus armor. Yep. 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 Uh, damage rolls. There's some rules on when you fight invisible enemies. Overbearing. Uh, you're dead at zero hit points. Optional rule, bind wounds. Characters can heal 1d6 points of damage after each combat encounter. Um, which I think that it might also mitigate the fact that you have lower armor class, so you're likely to lose more hit points right. in a battle. Mm -hmm. um, so is that just like rested recovery? And, and you don't really have, you know, you're probably not going to have a debt, you know, your, your spellcaster is having to function as both cleric and magic user, so mm -hmm. they, they may not have healing spells depending on how they rolled and what they asked for, so. Right. Uh, and there's morale checks, saving throws. Right. Um, and then there's a whole bunch on just the setting. Yes. And I haven't read through this in detail, but this gives you a lot of detail on the, on the gods, a are Aztec there. culture, the gods, why they do perform the rituals they do, including sacrifices, mm -hmm. houses of the dead, Aztec society, the role of women, uh, mm -hmm. law, warrior culture, um, military service, the capture of warriors, expansionism, military campaigns, and supplies. Yeah, this, an reminds, army. this reminds me they did in deities and demigods they do have like an Aztec pantheon. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting. I, I, I would venture that this one is probably much more accurate. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> they don't have stats either here, but and then, and then Tezcat, here's, it, Tezcat and Lapoca. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's the common ones. Yeah. Uh to talk about cacao beans. Uh, economics and trade there's stuff you know what, oh, what sort cool. of commodities yeah. are, are valuable cotton cabal maize mm -hmm. metal objects there's a timeline of events so you've actually got a historical timeline of, they can put things in of, of the ancient aztecs yeah i do um, like to have military campaigns and supply in the army in the field and how that works too which mm -hmm. is pretty, like if you wanted to do like some of the battles and stuff now that you have the you have the timeline so you could actually Yep. Look through that oh, list of list and, of emperors, which is nice. Yep. And uh, then the major cities of the and locations of the Aztec Empire, mm -hmm. Chaco, Kilwatlan. Yeah, it's a very short lived Oshilakan, empire, isn't it? Tenochtitlan, Lacapan. Yeah. So enemies of the Aztec of the Aztecs. The mm -hmm. so here's some of the other. Quite, you know, people that historically would have been their 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 enemies. Yeah, yeah. And then maps of Mexico, the Aztec Empire. Um, and then I think it ends with there's a chapter on herbalism and medicine. Right. Uh, and, and how to use that again, since I think that that's that's well placed, given that we don't have dedicated clerics. Right. Like we would in D and D. Um. And then, and then here's here's your bestiary monsters and foes of myth. Okay. Uh, so just sort of the general things. You, you've got a section on animals. Yeah. Um, and there's a section matrix. on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's a monster attack matrix. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then humans like your humans. Typical humans that you yep. run into. Uh huh. And then monsters. Fun. Oh, I wow. think one of the cool things that we we skipped over, but the 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 spellcaster, the priest has a shapeshifter ability yes, like a druid as that. well yeah um oh these monsters are cool yeah undead warriors wear jaguar yeah yeah demon or you know demon warriors undead toltec <laughs> yep yeah. i like this jaguar of tiscut tiscut lapoca weapon and a bite lovely mm -hmm. And then Giants. chapter 10. Oh, sorry. Giants? Yeah. Oh. yeah, there's a giant in here too. Okay. Uh, yep, and then uh, Ozcoco Zek. Mm -hmm. Chapter 10 gives you treasure. There's not a whole lot of listed here. It's mostly yeah, yeah. magical and cursed armor and weapons. Mm -hmm. um, and some descriptions of the different types. Yeah, page uh, 164 is pretty cool. Let's skip that. Let me see. Oh yeah, that, that emblem. The emblem. Yeah, that's the the uh, the the eagle on the cactus that led them to found 
uh, in Ratchet Line. Cool. Yeah, so it's good. I mean, there's a lot of this book packs a punch in a, yeah. a very short. And then they time. they give you here, here's a, a blank you, you can copy, uh, or if you have the PDF, you can just print it out of the the calendar. They talk about how how important it is to keep track of time because when you pray for your spells can be affected by oh, your right. birthday, right? Yes. And yes, the yes. time of year. So it gives you a calendar to have, and there's some rules about some suggestions on how to keep track of time uh, between sessions and during sessions to make sure you, 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 you incorporate this into the game. Yeah. And then the resources, that's sort of their, their appendix and equivalent appendix B yeah. resources, their and glossary glossary. Yeah. So I think that, so my, like, well, we we're talking about this, I'm thinking like, okay, how would I make an adventure? I think definitely use the sandbox area and decide what region I'm going to be, whether you're from the capital or outside the capital, what the general figure out the general, um, if it's a capital, it's a little easier, but outside the capital, you got to figure out like well, who the local nobles and all that kind of stuff is. But, uh, but then, you know, figure out an event that might happen or, or, or their, their Lord or whatever. Or I got to read through these backers and see how many people I know. <laughs> <laughs> I see Joe. I see. I see Joe Salvador is there. Oh, is he? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, using the wilderness of the dungeon is what it kind of suggests. And then you oh. can create the underworld adventuring, like going to a dungeon and and make something. So I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, so there you have it, Majuito. Right. Yeah, there's this discovery thing is really cool because you can go through the rent create a random encounter, right? Or yep. Or you go out on patrol and that becomes your adventure. And then you ahead of time roll for discoveries and stuff and then you know, go into what's underneath. So you could do it as a traditional dungeon crawl where you as a a burgeoning war band or group, small group uh, gets um you know has to gain status and fame in the lands of the Aztec. So I think that's pretty cool. There's BJ turning around. Yep. You know. All right, trying to, yeah, turn my there other camera off. So that was pretty cool. So that that there was a, a, a pretty thorough, not totally in depth, we didn't go through spell by spell, but pretty thorough unboxing and um, look through of Mahuidl. Again, by the basic expert using a white box engine to role play in the Aztec Empire. So I guess uh, we'll have to do this on the channel and play uh, at least at least a one shot an adventure. Maybe yeah, you know, we'll see how many players get are interested in doing it. And uh, I'm, I wonder, I wonder how many how many old old D and D adventures you could just pull out and just swap. Oh, you, you could probably oh oh yeah, that's a great idea. I could probably look through some of the old my old dungeons and then just reskin it, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of some that would be good for conversion. I mean, obviously, like the Lost City, um, right? But yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, there's probably a lot of good ones, right? You just change like who the, I mean, yeah, you could totally, you could totally be the Lost City, right? Just put it, yeah, like uh, in the northern desert or something, mm -hmm. right? And um, and then these are older, you know, yeah, people that got, were left behind during the migration or something, but now they've yeah. developed three different cults. You pick three three gods here that are akin to the the gods that they use in that. Yeah, Lost City mm -hmm. would totally work, right? Yeah, That'd pretty cool. I have to look what kind of like non human foes they have in here, you know, for yep. the stuff that's underneath, but. Um, like, do they have like the equivalent of goblins and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. You can just change them into, you know, men that have, like, just like the 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 people of the Lost City Temple and the Lost City, just change them into like people that have lived underground, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like Napped mole man, mole man equivalent or something. <laughs> you get something pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. So, well, thank you so much, BJ. Any last thoughts on? Um, Mach Weedle. No, I, th I think this to me is this kind of a you know, it, it I want to play it, yeah, 
the the I, I guess I'm just impressed at the quality and the the uh, the uh, thought that's gone into it. Uh -huh. But I also think this is a really kind of good example of kind of what the indie game and OSR movements can produce when someone has a really creative idea um, and, and kind of puts, puts some serious thought and, 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 and uh, a little bit of drive and passion into these are the kind of projects I, I, I don't hesitate to back. And right. then I kind of I kind of wish now, you know, looking back, I, I wish I would have, you know, maybe or maybe ordered two or, two or three extra copies to give his gifts or. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure know, we, could, it's just, we could do that now, you know, I don't I don't think there's I don't know if there's a I think there's a print on demand on drive through too. Yeah, it's, it's on drive through RPG. You can get a, you can't get the hard this one. This one was a backer, yeah, I backer, think backer, exclusive. backer, backer exclusive deluxe yeah. edition, but you can get a. um. I've got it up on drive through on my screen here. Uh, let me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You, you I mean, a, this is something I, I mean, I should, I should really plan yeah, to run this. Like during... you can get it a standard so you can get it in a, a PDF or a soft cover. I think the soft cover is white. It didn't yeah. have that black and it, and it doesn't have the embossed cover, but it's, it's red. Right. Um, the inside probably looks just, just like what we were just looking at. Right. Yeah. yeah. So definitely I, I want to think about running some a mock wheel adventure and, Next year at North Texas for sure. I think it'd be well there. Be, you know, um, we should should well we should we should reach out to the author and see if he wants to come. Come North Texas, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know where he lives, but yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for listening uh, to this "What's in the Box" episode on the Geomologist Presents with special guest, the Arcane Alien, this BJ Boyd, and we will put the link. Well, I put the link to uh, Jason Connerly's interview with a basic expert um, in the show notes on the YouTubes or the YouTube notes, I guess. So uh, thank you so much, BJ, for setting up the camera too. It's kind of it's yep. pretty fun. We got to do this again. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, and for everyone listening, good night and good rolling.